The mechanical watch movement, it's a kind of magic. The mechanical watch movement explained simply. Barrel, double barrel, escapement, motion works, keyless works. What is going on here? Today we are going to talk about the mechanical watch movement and I will try to explain it simply. By taking you on a journey to the heart of a mechanical watch, we will see what the different parts are that make up a watch movement and also how they all work together. So alright, let's take a moment and have a quick look at some of the parts we are currently seeing. The main plate is the foundation of any watch movement. All other parts are essentially mounted on the main plate and the main plate combined with the bridges is what holds everything together. Bridges are secured to the main plate with screws. The jewels then are essentially bearings which allow things to move with as little friction as possible. Now this contraption right here is a bit special, it's essentially a shock protection system. It holds the heart of your watch and protects it from shock damage. So what is the heart of a watch and what makes it tick? Well, that is essentially a story of energy. Energy creation, energy storage, energy release and energy regulation. We create energy by winding the watch. Now, as this is a manual winding watch, we do that by turning the crown, which rotates the stem. This then rotates the crown wheel, which turns the ratchet wheel. Now, the ratchet wheel sits on top of the barrel, which houses the all-important mainspring. As you wind your watch, you are turning the ratchet wheel, which coils the mainspring. Winding a watch essentially means tightening the coil of that mainspring. To avoid that the mainspring instantly unwinds as you tighten it, you can see that you have a click right there which presses into the ratchet wheel which prevents the mainspring from instantly unwinding. So you wind your watch and create energy by coiling the mainspring. That energy is now stored in the barrel, no battery inside. Now the power reserve, the amount of energy your watch can store or essentially the amount of time your watch can keep on ticking is mostly determined by the size of the mainspring and at times when a lot of energy is needed a watch movement can have more than one barrel, so meaning more than one mainspring. You might have heard of double barrel, triple barrel or even four barrel calibers. This refers to the number of barrels or mainsprings a movement has. Now the more energy is needed, the more complications that need to be powered, the more barrels you might find on a movement. Note that the vast majority of watch movements have just one single barrel. Now you have all that energy stored in the barrel, yet all that energy wants to do at this point is escape from that same barrel. The escape route for that energy is the going train. As the mainspring unwinds, it transfers its energy through the going train. The escape route eventually leads that energy to the escapement, which brings us to energy regulation. Now that energy release, the unwinding of the mainspring, needs to be regulated. So you wouldn't want that stored energy to escape in random fashion. You don't want the mainspring to unwind in just a few seconds. So we need a mechanism that regulates how that energy can escape from the barrel. So to recap at this point, we have energy stored in the barrel, which is traveling through gears we call the going train, which now leads us to this funky looking wheel. The escape wheel, which dances all day long with the pallet fork, which swings left and right. The rhythm at which these two dance is essentially set by the hairspring and the balance wheel, which swings back and forth. But how does this work? Now that is a tale not just of energy, but of action and reaction. So remember, energy is currently driving that escape wheel to move forward. All it wants to do, for as long as there is energy left in the barrel, is step forward. What is important to know as we continue here is that with every step the escape wheel makes, there are actually two things that happen. There is an action followed by a reaction. 
First, you have the energy that is moving from the barrel all the way to the escape wheel. So the escape wheel, therefore, wants to move forward. As it rotates forward, it hits the pallet jewels, which swings the pallet fork to the other side. Now, as the pallet fork moves at the back there, it gives a notch against the impulse pin or the impulse jewel, which gives a little push of energy to the balance wheel. The balance wheel swings away. So now time for the reaction. The balance wheel swings back as it basically wants to revert back to its center position. This is because of the hairspring which is attached to it as we saw earlier. That hairspring is what makes the balance wheel constantly try and find its center position. Now imagine pushing against a branch of a bush you, as you walk past it. You push it back and when you let go it swings back and reverts back to its usual center position as if nothing ever happened. This is essentially the same here. Now as the balance wheel swings back so does the impulse pin or the impulse jewel. Now as that swings back the impulse pin then once again engages with the pallet fork which turns it the other way. Now as the pallet fork rotates the other way it unlocks the escape wheel ever so briefly and allows it to advance by one more step. That step then again is enough to give a notch to the impulse pin and balance wheel which starts the cycle all over again. It can basically keep doing that for as long as there is energy left in the barrel as you of course need that energy to keep driving that escape wheel forward. Now this interaction between the escape wheel and the pallet fork is what creates the familiar ticking sound of your watch. Now an escapement typically beats at let's say 18,000 beats per hour so it is plenty busy. So to recap, the barrel holds the mainspring and the energy. As it unwinds, this sets the gear train in motion, which pushes that energy to the escapement. The escapement, pallet fork and escape wheel then distribute the energy, and the balance wheel and hairspring then regulate that energy. Now we know what makes a watch tick. A quick word as well on the parts I conveniently moved to the side earlier to keep things nice and clear. So the motion works and the keyless works. Simply put, combined they allow you to set a time and to read the time on your watch. So the keyless works here allow you to either set a time or wind the watch depending on the position you move the crown in this particular case. So as you pull the crown out one or more steps this then engages a different set of gears which enable a different function. So before the keyless works were invented you needed a separate key to wind the movement and to set a time. So here of course you do not need a key hence the name keyless works. Now the motion works then are a set of reduction wheels that turn the hour and minute hands. So the motion work moves forward as it interacts with the going train, the wheels which move forward at a steady pace thanks to the escapement. So essentially there you have it, this is how a mechanical watch essentially works. I hope you have a good basic understanding now of some of the key components of a watch movement and also the basic functioning of a mechanical watch.